Hey guys, welcome to Flip the Deck Tarot. In today's pick a card reading, we're going to check in with the person on your mind. We're going to figure out what their current feelings are towards your connection with them and what their intentions are when it comes to this connection. So we will take a look at your relationship, um, doing kind of a person A, person B type of spread. And we will look at how they are currently feeling and also what, if any, actions or steps they might take towards you in the near future. So we have three readings to choose from today. For reading number one, we have the Opalite Heart. For reading number two, we have the Clear Quartz. For reading number three, we have Yellow Jasper. So take as much time as you need to select the reading that is calling to you the most. I will put your timestamps down below in the description box. I'm going to get started with reading number one and I will see you in your reading. Hi number one, if you were drawn to the opalite heart, this is going to be your reading. We're going to be looking at um, how the person on your mind is feeling towards your connection right now, what the current energies are with this connection, and what their intentions are for this connection. So um, let's flip over your first two oracle cards. They're going to kind of define our spread and give us a nice person A, person B um, type of outlook over this relationship as the current energies stand. So for person A, we actually have cornucopia. And for person B, we'll go ahead and flip them now. We have man holding a heart. Whoa. Okay. Um, okay. This is actually really, really gorgeous energy. What I'm seeing first, we're going to start with person A. So the first thing that's jumping out at me with this energy is that this is card 11. And 11 is a number that symbolizes our ability to connect to our higher levels of intuition and also to our subconscious mind. Uh, so person A in this connection may feel that they've had some sort of intuitive knowing when it comes to this connection. This could have been an intuitive knowing that they felt immediately when they met this person or even an intuitive knowing leading up to meeting this person. Um, there could have like kind of been a feeling that this connection was significant or was going to be significant right from the beginning, which can be an odd feeling because I feel like this person would relate to um, kind of feeling like, why do I, like, why do I already think that there's something so special or something significant or that this connection is going to be meaningful in my life, like right from meeting this person. Um, and I feel like person A probably had this feeling like they were being led to this connection by some sort of divine force. So this could indicate that since meeting person B, um, they've become more intuitive or they've been able to tap into a higher level of consciousness. I'm hearing, oh God, I'm hearing thrown into. So I'm, I'm kind of being corrected by um, either your guides or possibly this is your person's guides. Um, so this might be that in some cases, person A may have felt like, like the deepening of consciousness that happened so abruptly for them was, um, maybe almost against their will or like there was nothing they could do to control it. They couldn't control the depth of emotion that was happening or they couldn't slow, um, the amount of feelings that were kind of like being poured on them all at once. Um, it's kind of this feeling of that this connection triggered something that couldn't be stopped. Um, yeah. And it's like once that started so much unfolded from there and may still be unfolding from there. So almost like this runaway train feeling, this is in a really positive way. This card gives me um, a very positive feeling, but there really could be a, a, a sense that something was triggered here that couldn't be stopped. Um, yeah, 11s are also my symbol for synchronicities and repeating numbers in general. So this person may have seen 1111 and that might be significant, um, to them, but really any kind of number repeating kind of, re um, number sequence, 11s bring that to mind for me. So this could be that um, some kind of number sequence follows this person around like two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 um, double eights are coming to mind. And also 
the number sequence one, two, three, four is being highlighted, but this can be any kind of um, repeated number that you see or any kind of, even if this isn't repeating um, number sequence, this can be a number that seems to kind of follow this person around. So depending on what side of this you resonate with, which you might find yourself on both sides of this equation, but that is something that is jumping out to me for person A, some kind of sign or synchronicities, and it'll be different for everyone. Um, for some of you, I'm hearing this is actually even an animal um, or some sort of symbol that was recurring. And I'm, I'm also like noticing this butterfly in the picture. Like it's just jumping out to me right now. So this could be something like a butterfly or a particular type of bird or a dragonfly that seemed to kind of appear to you around this connection and then just follow you around if this is the side that you're resonating with. Um, yeah. And I feel like saying again, they've kind of noticed this leading up to the beginning of this connection or started to notice these synchronicities after meeting um, person B. So that would be significant for, for person A. Um, anyway, <laughs> this cornucopia card is really about wishes being fulfilled. Um, there's actually a feeling of fullness or abundance that comes along with this energy. So, um, I think this person feels like this connection is a huge blessing and I feel like saying regardless of any challenges that this connection may have faced, it's like this person is able to see the blessings um, and see the abundance and see the bright side even if there has been a little bit of a challenge here. Yeah, I think, I think that that energy is coming from the amount that person A feels like they've grown as a result of this connection. So um, I feel like this is someone who knows how happy this relationship makes them or how happy this relationship has the potential of making them. And also how much work they're willing to put in to reap this harvest. So I do, I get like a positive energy here, even if this is uh, something that has to be worked toward or something that is just full of great potential but hasn't fully been realized yet, I still get a lot of positive energy from this. I, I get a hopeful energy and almost like an excitement. So it's bringing me um, to the image of kind of like a fall. I guess this imagery makes me think of fall. It makes me think of the harvest. And it's like a lot of work goes into reaping that harvest. And sometimes we have to kind of think about all of the rewards that we will get after putting in some sort of work. So this could be a positive, um, almost projection. Like this could be a hopeful energy for something that will be reaped in the future. This can also indicate really happy and full feelings within this connection. Um, this person in a lot of ways is a bit idealistic. But I, again, I also get that feeling of a very hard worker. So I feel like they do have dreams of love and of this like divine connection and of family and even of financial security out of this connection, some form of security. But I do feel like, um, I feel like person B kind of furthers this vision. So I, I feel like this might be someone who has a lot of visions on their own. They have a lot like um, a lot of dreams and goals on their own and they kind of see person B as someone that can not necessarily supply these things. It's not that they don't think they can have all these great things without person B, but it's like person B would be the icing on the cake. Person B would um, kind of bring all of this full circle and be the ultimate dream. And I feel like that's how, how they view this connection. Yeah, they definitely see the potential here. Um, they kind of see how perfect this union is or how perfect it could be, and they want to build upon what's already there. So that's where I see their focus going, building upon this this really lovely foundation is, is how I'm seeing it. Um, I just feel like person A will do whatever it takes when it comes to this connection if they feel like the 
like the juice is worth the squeeze is how that's coming through and I'm not really sure why it could be all of this fruit imagery but it's like even if this does require work or if it requires a plan if it requires um, some kind of diligent action or some sort of change they're willing to put that in as long as the outcome is going to be worth all of that effort but overall I see some really positive energy um, about this connection from person A. So let's look at person B and see what's going on. So for person B, we have man holding a heart. And I feel like, I feel like person B is wanting to offer something more. Um, it's interesting how this energy is coming through for this card because the same card like it can represent so many things and in this connection I'm feeling like person B um, might be holding back a little bit but I'm also sensing a, a willingness here so this shows me somebody who's getting more in touch with their emotional side who is wanting to show up more in a in an emotional capacity um, Someone who's starting to see the importance of a deep emotional connection. So this could be someone who's had really shallow connections in the past, who's been in relationships and they've never really felt as deeply as they feel about this connection. So I feel like this person's heart is almost, this is kind of odd imagery, but it's like, it's almost like they feel their heart leaping out like leaping toward person a they feel something that they haven't felt before even if this is someone who um, had been in serious relationships before been in committed relationships maybe even felt that they had been in love before i feel like something's different about this connection um what's interesting about this energy is although i feel this willingness coming through for person b i also see someone who is sitting very still um, so this could be an indication of some kind of hesitance or, or something holding this person back. I, it's, it's weird. Like, um, we will have to get deeper into this, but it's like, there's, there's, um, an absolute willingness. And then there's also maybe some sort of stillness that I'm picking up on. Um, it, it feels to me like they seem to be considering the idea of making a genuine offer or making a genuine connection or deepening a connection. Um, yeah, but there's also something that's holding them back at the same time, which is really interesting. For some reason, I'm getting the image of a child who's like, like imagine like you're back in, <laughs> like in grade school or something and like you have a crush on someone and maybe you have a little love note you want to give them or a little gift you've picked out for them or, or maybe it's Valentine's Day and you want to give them a Valentine. And it's like that little bit of shyness or that little bit of timid energy that kind of um, comes forward and it's like, like, oh, like I, I want to give this to them so bad, but I don't have the courage to walk over to them and offer them this little piece of my heart. It's almost like that energy. Um, so there might be an energy of this person waiting for person A to come toward them or waiting for person A to um, make something known to them so that they can have a little bit more courage to offer this this love or this gesture because I just I see I see this um, this man in this picture he's holding the heart like he's he's ready to offer it but at the same time he's holding back a little bit so um interesting energy i yeah we'll just see how you how you resonate with that because there might be something about this connection that you know um would make this person feel this way it might be that they need to hear something from you they need to um they need to know that the path is clear for them they need to know that it's okay um they might think hmm Interesting, interesting energy because I'm feeling, I'm already kind of getting a vibe of where you might be on this, but of course, whichever side resonates with you, but there might be something about this connection that's a little bit unclear. There might be something that's holding this person back. Um, it's like they're not quite ready to, to hand over their heart yet. I feel like this person is becoming more sensitive. They're becoming more open to the idea of making that offer, um, but it's like they've still got their grip on their on their heart a little bit. This to me, like, um, what's interesting, especially with all this abundant energy coming from 
person A, it feels like this person over here on person B's side is like about to crack open. And um, it's like they've shown a more vulnerable side of themselves. They might not be ready to let go of their heart completely, but it does feel like they they know who they would extend this offer to or they know who they would give their heart to um, if they had the chance or if the path was made clear because there is kind of an intensity here so um you see the way that this like the guy who's um who's pictured here it's a very intense stare and it's a very not only intense but intent like i feel like his eyes are locked on um, exactly the direction he wants to go. He's he's very clear about which way he would go um, if he was going to stand up and and make some sort of move. So I do feel like there's certainty here um, and this feeling of abundance I am feeling like is shared on both sides um, because there's something making person B very very sure of what direction they want to go in so i want to open up this energy a little bit more with some tarot and just see what kind of clarification we can get um from these oracle cards like see what other information is in here so i'm going to start with person a um and just clarify this cornucopia Okay, I think that's it. Okay, so we have the sun. Um, <laughs> that's a, that's the same kind of energy. That's a very, um, very hopeful, very bright, very um, positive. This is a very positive perspective about this connection. Um, very optimistic. So... The funny thing about the sun energy is with the sun energy, oftentimes I think about um, material happiness because this can be like um, a great outcome to a situation. Um, it's, it's kind of this harvest energy as well. So like I was saying before, I was kind of picking up on this energy from, from person A in this connection that they have big dreams um beyond romantic connection they have big dreams for themselves and big goals of what they want to accomplish in life in general and it's like having having this person with them seems to be the icing on the cake here so i feel like this is giving me like um ten of cups ten of pentacles type of energy when person a thinks of this connection they kind of think of it um in that context in that context of having it all and um, building something, like building something of value and, and really having a lot of abundance in every area of their life. And it seems to me like this connection's, uh, like it's playing a large part in that. The vision of this connection is playing a large part in um, this overall feeling. So let's see about some energy for person B. To support this man holding a heart. Oh, <laughs> that's definitely your card. Because I got the floor. Okay, so we have the Four of Wands. I love this. I love the sun and I love the sunflower. So I feel like that's um, energy kind of mirroring there. I feel like both people in this connection are very hopeful and very optimistic when it comes to this connection. Um, the Four of Wands is about building a foundation. It's about some form of celebration. So person B may really be looking forward to a deeper connection with person A, um, to this connection expanding, growing, it going somewhere. Um, for some of you, like um, the Four of Wands can indicate an engagement, even a wedding. So depending on where you are in your connection, this might resonate for you. Uh, to me, that always just highlights a deeper form of connection, some sort of official commitment or um, even like an announcement, like making this relationship official, going public um, with this relationship. It kind of gives me that feeling. Um, it, it really shows the two of you working in harmony. So that's what I see. I see that there's something harmonious coming or there's like, 
there's the energy on both sides of wanting this to work harmoniously, wanting this relationship to flow naturally and just to um, kind of bathe in all of the all of the good things, all of the optimistic things, all of the hopeful things. That's coming from both sides. So that energy is definitely um, being mirrored. And you might recognize yourself on both sides of this spread because the energy is being mirrored so heavily in this, in this group. Um, overall, I feel like person B feels really good when they are um, around person A. So this is kind of an indication that person B feels a lot of ease around person A. Um, they just kind of feel good vibes when the two of you are together. The Four of Wands also talks about stability and um, appreciation. It's kind of coming through as appreciation. So I feel like person B is finding more comfort in navigating their emotions. And although it might be difficult for them to like to offer to open up their heart it feels almost like it might it might feel foreign to them in some way um because this is a pretty vulnerable position to be in it's like they have so much appreciation just for being given the opportunity to grow in this way so i feel like again that's really mirrored energy there's a lot of appreciation on both sides for whatever um, growth has happened or however far you have come in this connection just almost for knowing each other at all i feel like the two of you make each other really happy um, maybe not all the time but it's definitely the impression like the overall impression that is being given from this connection i feel like when the two of you step away from each other the overall impression is like how happy you were together how um like what what a nice time you had together how easily the conversation flowed or like how you want to see each other again it just feels very hopeful so i want to look at um the energy between the two of you the energy that's holding this connection together your card just shot out so you have um, the river card and we'll get another oracle card so this is kind of the energy of the connection um, or the energy that's that's kind of tying it together so we also have mood rings um, interesting because with the four of wands I was saying that this is an indication of um, a potential proposal an engagement marriage something like that or a deepening of commitment and then you have an like a literal ring card so um, there might be some kind of significant piece of jewelry that you associate with this connection maybe a gift from this person um, or a gift that you've given this person but this also is kind of a sign of um, of commitment of making things known because a ring is very visible <laughs> you know so it's a way to kind of announce um, a deeper connection so with these cards, um, with the river card, it kind of represents something that's very steady, something that's um, gradual, and it is an indication of patience, of being patient or needing to use <laughs> some patience when it comes to this connection. Um, so this could be a connection that's kind of um, slowly unfolding. It doesn't feel like anything that's rushed. Um, the river card really speaks to steady progress and it gives me the impression that neither person in this connection wants to give up on it um it there's like a steadfastness to this that river card really brings to mind um knight of pentacles energy where there's movement it's it's slow and steady um, and there's a lot of work involved, but it's, it's like a dedicated type of energy. So neither one of you wants to give up on this. And even if this has been like, this might be a connection that's been in the works for a long time. There could even be something that stands in the way of this connection, but there's also a lot of commitment here on both ends. So that's really good to see. Now, with the mood rings card, I, I get the impression that like there could also be some hot and cold behavior going on or some kind of uncertainty. Um, the, the mood ring makes me think of, you know, like moods or feelings or circumstances changing rapidly from one thing to the next. So it could be that circumstances surrounding this connection um, are not steady. They're not stable. Um, one day it's this, the next day it's that. It could be that... Um, 
communication isn't consistent b between you and this person at times so maybe there are times when neither of you really know exactly how to feel about this or where this connection is going um the interesting thing is if there is any amount of like uncertainty when it comes to this connection that could kind of explain why this is a slow and steady progression like why this is something that's um kind of unfolding because i feel like there's there's almost this feeling of the two of you trying to get like a uh, get a vibe on each other like maybe sometimes um trying to decipher moods or or silence or um expressions or or reading between the lines on things, trying to kind of determine what this person's mood is or what their attitude is toward this connection without knowing for sure. So it could make the connection kind of have this slower river type energy. Um, yeah, I still see I still see a bond and I still see commitment here. I almost see this ring as like tying the two sides together. So um, take that as it resonates. There might be a literal ring connection here. Um, and there could be there. This could be a relationship that has experienced some ups and downs or some uncertainty because I do feel like um, I feel like there's a certain amount of trying to decipher an energy here. Uh, between the two of you. So let's look into the tarot and get a feeling about this person's, um, their current feelings about this connection and their intentions. So let's see how we're going to do this. I think I'm going to kind of on the left side we're going to look at this person's feelings over here. Here we'll look at their intentions. And I'm thinking, let's just let this unfold. <laughs> I think we'll do bottom of the deck energy to see if there's any action this person might take towards you. But let's go ahead and get some tarot here and see what's going on. So um, what is this person's feelings toward this connection right now? How are they feeling toward this connection? Ace of Cups. Wow, you guys. <laughs> Knight of Cups. How are they feeling toward this connection? The Chariot. Wow. Wow. Okay. I'm going to, let's pull a couple of cards for um, intentions when it comes to this connection. So we have the Three of Cups. The Page of Wands. And we're going to take a look at the bottom of the deck energy. Six of Cups. Okay. Wow. Um... I could tell there was something here just, just from the beginning energy in this group, but whoa. So over on this side, we're looking at this person's feelings towards this connection. We're looking at intentions over here and possible moves that they may make towards you bottom of the deck energy. So their feelings toward this connection, Ace of Cups, Knight of Cups, and the Chariot. Um, this person wants to be closer to you. If there is some sort of distance in this relationship, their desire is to be closer to you. Um, especially with that river energy and like the fact that this might be kind of slow going, there might be something that's unfolding. There might be, um, uh, maybe even words that are left unsaid. I feel like, um, this could be the type of connection where sometimes the two of you aren't really sure how to read each other. Um, maybe even in the very beginning, depending on, um, how far you are into this connection, but it could be the type of thing where it's like, well, I'm not sure if they like me. Um, and this is like, I feel like you guys are kind of mirroring each other with this, like with that mood rings card. It's like, I'm not really sure how, um, how they feel. I'm not sure if it's okay for me to say this. I'm not sure if it's okay for me to offer this. Um, so it does feel like this person wants to make some sort of 
like they want to make some sort of move to deepen this connection. They want to offer you something. I mean, it, it can't be any more clear than this with the Ace of Cups and the Knight of Cups. So the Ace of Cups, Aces are always about new beginnings and potential. They see a lot of potential here. And I feel like that was picked up on in the beginning of the reading. There's, there's abundance here. There's potential for something great. And this is really emotional potential. This might be outside of this com this person's comfort zone, really. Um, this might not be a, like the type of connection that they're used to experiencing, but there's a newness here. So they might want a new start with you. If this is about needing to start over, um, wanting a fresh start in love with you, that's that energy is definitely coming through. And this can be about reconciling. This can also be about starting a new um, romance or starting a new relationship. For some of you, I think when this person, like when they want to start over, they want to revive things with you, they want to start this relationship in a way that makes it more official. So they might want to um, start again with titles this time. They want to start again um, like with this energy of the ring, um, really making it official, announcing it. Um, yeah, even the Knight of Cups is giving me that kind of energy. They might want to make some sort of public display about um, about this relationship. So they're really feeling like they're feeling the love is, is how I would put it. Um, they're feeling a lot of romantic and emotional energy towards you. And they're feeling like they want to, like they wish they could deepen this connection move closer to you in some way especially if there's distance like because you have this knight card and the chariot i'm picking up a lot of messages about movement so this might be that there is some physical distance between the two of you and they wish they could close that gap um when we look over here in terms of intention we have the three of cups and the page of wands so their intention when it comes to this relationship is um, it's like it has a celebratory energy. It's almost like I sort of get like a victorious energy in a way. Um, they want to make something more official. I'm really I'm getting that message over and over again. They want to make something more official. They want to celebrate something with you. Um, this might be that because this relationship may have been kind of slow it might be that the two of you connecting or reconnecting or deepening this will feel like some sort of reward after like a, a long fought battle or something like that. Um, yeah, it, it feels like they want like they want to celebrate something with you. Uh, for some of you, you might have some kind of significant um, date coming up right now. It might be somebody's birthday or they plan to like spend a significant holiday with you or something like that. Um, it, this could even be that they intend to contact you to make some sort of contact or make a gesture towards you during some significant um, holiday or occasion. Um, and I can also see here that they might intend to involve your friends in this. So again, this is kind of that energy of wanting to announce something. So they may want to um, make some sort of display that is public. Um, they may want to like go go Facebook official or something like that, post, uh, post pictures together on social media or something like that. But um, with the page of wands this is someone who is moving toward like this passionate feeling they're letting this passionate feeling drive them forward um and again this feeling of newness and this feeling of potential so it's like they intend to start something new um we're gonna when we look at the this energy here of potential moves that they might make towards you and we have the six of cups this is actually really beautiful this is an offer um, this is a very sweet and romantic offer and that's what I'm seeing here for you, this Six of Cups energy. Um, I kind of want to look underneath Nine of Cups, Queen of Cups. <laughs> you guys have um, all the Cups cards that, that you could possibly have. This person, um, potential moves that they might make towards you, there might be an offer, there might be a gift. Um, this feels really innocent in a way. It feels like they want to reunite with you for some of you. So if there's been a separation, their intention is to close that gap, to have some sort of reunion. Um, and they're thinking a lot about this. Like, 
there's a lot of memories. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of romantic gesture that um, was symbolic in some way that had to do with memories, if this is a connection that you've been in for a while. But I do see this person just approaching you with the sweetest energy. Um, yeah, just the just the sweetest, uh, most innocent energy because what they want is something really pure. And I, I, I'm kind of like, I'm picking up on that based on the energy at the beginning of this reading, especially with the man holding a heart, um, no matter which side you resonate with, but there's, there's kind of just a sweet energy between the two of you and um, an innocent energy. If there's any hesitation here, it's only because, like I was saying, there might be a little bit um, of hesitance to open up in this in this kind of romantic capacity. So just getting some oracle cards to kind of top off this energy. We have clear, cancel, and release. So there might be something that needs to be cleared out in this connection, um, some energy that needs to be released. This could have to do with this connection. This could have to do with past, uh, past relationships, something that needs to be cleared out. Even releasing hurt from... Uh, failed past relationships or um, potential betrayal or just things not working out. Let's see what else. Let's see. So we have self-acceptance could be a huge part in opening up when it comes to this connection and we have healing energy yeah I was picking up on that with um, with the clear cancel and release so there could be something that needs to be healed here honestly for most of you I don't think it has a lot to do with this connection I think it has to do with past connections um, past hurts maybe even current things that this person might be going through but they might um, need to do a little bit of healing um, it feels like that's what they want to do I'm gonna grab you just couple of oracle cards there can even be kind of a feeling of like wondering if they're good enough wondering if um, if you feel the same way about them which I do think that the feelings are reciprocated here but there could be kind of a feeling of um, needing to accept themselves so that they can see themselves the way that you see them because I think there's a lot of love here rejection yeah definitely fear of being Fear of being rejected, fear of offering the heart and getting nothing in return and soul connection coming out for you guys. So, yeah, um, we have gifts at the bottom of the deck. <laughs> um, six of cups, that's six of cups energy there. So, yeah, if this person um, approaches you with some sort of gift or something, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Um, they feel like this connection overall is a gift to them, that it's teaching them a lot. I do feel like there might be a little bit of hesitation in terms of feeling like they might be rejected, like they might not be good enough, needing to kind of tap into that energy of self-acceptance a little bit, needing to release some old baggage. But um, overall, this energy looks really, really good. It looks very positive, And I think that there's a lot of um, love and growth and positivity on both sides. So yeah, I think that's all I see for you. Number one, thank you so much for hanging out with me and letting me read your cards. If you did like this reading, if you resonated with any of these messages, don't forget to like the video, leave me a comment down below and hit that subscribe button if you feel like it. And hopefully I will see you again in another reading really soon. Bye. Hi, number two, if you were drawn to the clear quartz, this is going to be your reading. We're going to find out what the person on your mind's current feelings are toward this connection and what their possible intentions are when it comes to this connection. So we're going to start this reading with a person A, person B spread um, using these oracle cards. And we're going to just look at the energies of both of you. Uh, you might find that you recognize your energy on both sides of this, this spread. And that would just mean that you're kind of mirroring each other. That would be um, that's perfectly fine if you recognize yourself on both sides. So let's start with person A and see what kind of energy we have. So we have card eight, indecision. And for person B, we have card 47, the thinking woman. Interesting. <laughs> um, 
it's funny how like right away although these energies don't seem on on the surface to be very similar they actually kind of are because when we're indecisive about something we do think a lot about it so we've got like one person thinking a lot about this connection the other person maybe having a difficult time making a decision regarding this connection um i also feel like <sighs> I feel like pointing out that that this is card eight. For some reason, eights have been very significant in um, in in readings lately. So, I feel like pointing out that this is card eight, and eight is a number of manifestation, of creation, of abundance. So, um, I kind of just want to throw that out there. Just keep that in mind as we are sifting through this energy. This could be a case of self-fulfilling prophecies over here on person A's side when we think about the idea of manifesting and indecision. So, um, this could be like this person feeling very indecisive about something, um, not feeling that they have clarity about something, not knowing which direction to go in and actually creating and manifesting more of that kind of energy in their life. So um, let's just kind of keep that in mind as we look at this. But I want to start over here with person A. Um, and it does look like person A might be um, kind of hesitating to make a final decision about something regarding this connection or might be sort of unsure about which way to go when it comes to this connection. It could be that person A is missing some kind of information. So when I look at this image here, I see somebody standing at a crossroads. The, um, the, the path that they've been on is no longer. It, it does not continue. It ends. And they have to make a decision if they're going to go um, down this path or down this path and when you look at this you notice the paths are actually labeled unknown so there's not a whole lot of information there and under unknown i mean i don't know what that says um i do think there is some writing there is some writing on the this lower sign here but i i can't even make out what it says so basically this person might feel like they're missing some sort of information when it comes to this connection because um, they kind of know they have to go either right or left, but they're not exactly sure what they're going to encounter down either of those paths. And it's like they're not really sure if um, the destination, like if the final destination at the end of that path is where they want to be. So this could be because they're not, they don't feel like they have all of the details. Um, yeah, that'll that'll put us in a place of indecision for sure. It, this could also be like circumstances in their life might be preventing them from making um, a final or a firm decision about something. So they could be kind of standing in the middle, um, weighing their options, trying to figure out what will happen, like maybe running like scenarios is kind of what I call it. Like, um, if if I were to make this choice, how would it play out? If I were to make the other choice, how would it play out? And they might be trying to kind of run the scenario to the end to see if they can get the information about what lies at the end of that path. But um, they might not be able to fully play the scenario out. They might not be able to reach um, a final idea or decision about where they actually think that path is going to lead them. Um, interesting when we kind of I'm dipping back into that energy of manifestation with the number eight here so they might be trying to decide what they're going to manifest by making a particular decision and um, they might not feel sure about what they're going to manifest so that could be where that energy is coming from um, I'm also kind of feeling like this this feeling of finality like they might feel like um, whatever decision they make will be final if they choose one then they Kind of cut off the possibility of the other um and this could be honestly in some cases this could be a person who is trying to keep their options open so if i'm being completely honest about all of the energy that could be encompassed in this um this person's intention with this indecision could be good and it could be bad there's the possibility here that they might be maybe wanting to choose between two love interests and they're kind of afraid to make a firm commitment to either side because um, it will it will be definite. It will mean that they can't explore something with the other person. So that's a definite possibility with this energy. We're going to look deeper into this. So we'll see if that's likely in this scenario. But I'm just throwing that out there because it is um, it's a possibility. Now, this doesn't have to be 
um, those sort of intentions. This could be something like this person's facing down a decision between two different versions of themselves or um, two different versions of their life. They might be kind of playing out how their life will be one way or the other. And there, there might be a sense of if I, if I choose this thing, then I can't choose the other thing. So that could be playing into this here. So choosing this connection, in this case for person A, could mean the end of something important in their life, or it could mean that they have to compromise some aspect of their life. Um, it could mean that they have to drastically change some aspect of their life. And I feel like it's leaving them in a state of limbo. This person might have to move, for instance, like, um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm getting that vibe even from the card, but it could be that, um, in order for this connection to grow, for it to flourish, for it to blossom, they might have to, um, move to a different location. Um, Yeah, I'm also feeling like for some, this could be that some kind of, um, they might have to change some kind of relationship dynamic with someone in their life in order to pursue this connection, um, in order to make the, th these things work between the two of you. This could have to do with um, ex-partners. They might need to kind of change something about the way that that dynamic is working or deal with some kind of family issue. They they could have like a family member that, that likes to have a say over what they do in their life and they have to, um, for lack of a better way of saying this, maybe put that person in their place in order to make this work. And that could be kind of overwhelming to them when they think about what they have to take on. Um, it feels daunting to them right now. It feels confusing. I'm, I'm getting like, there's a lot of choices for them and it feels confusing. So I almost get the feeling that there's like, there could be a, a big, a, like a monster in a way. Like, um, I'm imagining this person's running from a monster and there's these two paths and they don't really know which way to go to get away from this monster. So there could be some great fear that this person is facing. Um, in their life in general. It could have to do with this connection, but it might not have to do directly with this connection. This might be what they're just going through in their life in general. Um, yeah, I feel like in some cases they've given somebody a little bit too much power over the decisions in their life, and that might be what's putting them in this place of indecision right now, because they might need to make a decision for themselves. Um, so this might be some sort of internal fear that they're facing down that's coming to the surface. This could be um, a literal person or a thing in their life that is kind of, um, it's coming to a head, it's coming to a surface and they feel like they need to make some sort of difficult decision. Um, I feel like that's what's making the choice so difficult is that there might be fear associated with this. I, I get the feeling like this person is here in kind of like a dark forest situation. So there's there's kind of um, like an eerie vibe. So I'm getting the feeling that there might be some fear associated with which path they're going to take, which choice they're going to make. And that's what's making this choice so difficult. Because when you think about it, running from a fear will lead you to a very different place than chasing your dreams down will lead you. So they might actually feel torn between doing what feels safe or what feels like they've always done because we tend to run from the same fears over and over and over again. So maybe that's the, the, the safe option. That's the familiar choice. But um, I feel like they might, they also feel the desire to do what feels right to them. Not, all, not just what feels safe, but what feels right. So um, person A is, is feeling unsure about what their next step should be. Um, they might have a clear idea of the next step they wish they could take but they aren't, I don't think they're really sure on how to navigate their next move about some area of their life. So let's move on to person B's um, energy with the thinking woman. Um, I'm. There's a lot of similarities here, like I was saying before, in terms of the amount of thought that's going into this connection and how, how life circumstances may be impacting this connection. I see both people thinking about it. I see one person that might be more obviously thinking about it or that might want to communicate about their thoughts regarding this connection than the other, and that would be person B. They, they might be more on the surface thinking about it. They might feel like they're the only ones thinking about it or considering everything. Um, they might feel that they're the only ones trying to communicate about these thoughts, but 
there's a lot of thought on both sides. So that's just important to note. That's mirrored energy there. That is a similarity, but I think the way that it's displayed is coming across very differently. Um, I feel like person B can sense person A's indecision or that hesitant energy um, toward this connection. Um, in some cases, there could have even been discussions about what steps should be taken, what should we do next, um, what's the plan, something like that, or discussions um, that, that really were started with the goal of gaining more clarity about where this relationship might go in the future. And it's like one way or another, I just feel like person B really picked up on person A's uncertainty, either through something that they said, um, maybe through something that they failed to say, something that they omitted, um, or, or through like their actions not lining up with whatever whatever they did say or how whatever they did communicate. So I feel like um, one way or another person B kind of picks up on this, this indecision on this hesitant energy from person A. And I feel like that kind of like that vibe of, of hesitance has brought person B into almost like brought them up into their head space is how it's coming through. Um, I feel like this connection for person B really started out as really for person A as well, but I feel like this connection really started out as more of a feeling. It started out as something that was, um, an emotional, like it was based on emotion. It was more of a feeling. And then because of whatever kind of confusion or, or whatever is slowing this down or whatever this decision is that's not being made it sort of, it feels like, like the connection has almost taken the form of like a puzzle to solve or something. Um, so what I think is happening here is that <laughs> I think indecision kind of has a tendency of being contagious and it feels almost like person B caught it, <laughs> caught it from person A. Now, I don't think that, um, I don't think that person B is is indecisive. I don't really get that vibe from them, but I feel like feeling this energy from person A has put them in a place of not really being completely sure. Um, I feel like it's put them in a place of dedicating a decent amount of mental energy toward this relationship, even to the point of maybe sometimes having doubts of their own or having, um, not having the clarity that they once thought that they did. And this could be because of missed opportunities. This could be because of time going by and things like that. But I feel like um, person B sometimes is like, you know, I'm not really sure what to do about this either. Or given these circumstances or um, if I didn't hear from you or if you didn't make your choice or something, I'm not really sure what to do right now. So I do feel person B in more of this mental space. I feel like they've thought a lot about this. They've thought about it from every angle. They've kind of analyzed this. Um, I feel like... I feel like a lot of this thought is happening because um, the answers aren't always readily available from person A. And to be honest, after sifting through the energy of person A, I can't really blame them for maybe not always having the answer because I think that they're in a decent amount of confusion themselves when it comes to any kind of choices or changes that they have to make in their life. So they might not be purposely withholding information, but they just might not actually know um, what to say or what answer to offer. But it does feel like like person B, like the, the thinking woman person, like this person has to fill in the blanks a lot for themselves. Um, I think overall, whether this, this indecisive kind of energy or this waiting around energy resonates in your situation, overall, I think that person B is um, more of the planner in this scenario, more of the, um, more of the thinker, more of the analytical um, force in this connection. Um, this is a person who probably sees a solution to any problem. Um, not just in this connection, but just kind of like how they are as a person. They can, they can, um, they can reason their way out of anything. They can find a solution to any problem. 
I feel like that person A might have this person stumped right now, which could be frustrating because I do think that this is someone who is um, very smart and very resourceful and will come up with a solution to a problem if need be. But um, in this case, there might be a little bit more teamwork that's needed. So maybe they don't feel that they can solve this problem on their own. Um, yeah, this might be the one, this might be the one solution that they don't have, or the one problem that they don't have a solution to, at least not without receiving more information, or at least not without person A um, being able to make the decisions that, that will provide more clarity. So um, yeah, I want to open, I want to open this energy up a little bit more and see what else we can um, gain from this, what else we can see. Really interesting. I think what's surprising about this, what might be surprising to you, no matter which side of this you recognize yourself and your energy in, I think the amount of time that both of you spend thinking about contemplating and looking for solutions um, when it comes to this connection, even if there's really no problem to be solved, but there's just like, um, just a lot of thought behind this connection. Um, I think it might surprise you. It would surprise each of you how much, um, how much you are alike in this way, because it might not be apparent. You might sometimes feel like you're the only one, um, thinking, or you're the, you're the only one faced with a, a difficult decision or you're the only one making a plan and that really might not be the case so let's look at some deeper energy for there's your card <laughs> let's look at some deeper energy for um person a so we have the nine of pentacles for person a hmm, okay work financial matters might come into play for them this could have a huge um, part to play into this decision um or into this it's almost like a balancing act that i feel like this person could be playing um okay i don't even know where that card <laughs> your card just kind of shot out um you have the nine of swords okay really interesting because I was saying that you two are mirroring each other more than you realize because this energy does display um, very differently for each of you. So you both you both came through with nines here. So that energy, it's interesting that these are both nines. Um, the energy of nines is about completion. It's about almost being done with a cycle but there being a little bit more there's a little bit more to discover there's a little bit more to sift through there's uh, maybe more lessons to learn but almost being there so let's let's look a little deeper into person a's energy so um the knight of pentacles is very independent energy it does have to do with financial matters um it can be about um a lot of hard work that's been put into something so this could be that someone has dedicated a lot of time or energy into something that now might be presenting a little bit of a problem or um, putting them at this crossroads and a lot of why they might not know which way to go is because of how much time and effort has been dedicated um, to something so this could be a previous relationship this could be establishing themselves in a particular place in a particular position and um, some some part of this relationship might um, challenge that in a way um, but with this with this energy it's very independent so that that in itself can have to do with this indecisive energy this could be someone who maybe sees themselves as single or sees themselves as independent they might not be ready to give up their their single life um, I said I would look a little bit more into this energy of maybe someone who wants to keep their options open. The Nine of Pentacles would support that. That, of course, won't be true in every scenario, but um, keep that in mind. If that resonates in your scenario, this could be someone who wants to keep their options open. They want to remain single. They want to play the field, and um, they feel a little bit indecisive about committing to something uh, 100% because it will close other doors. Um 
And again, this doesn't have to be about other relationships, but this can be about something that they've established and built on their own. Um, something that they've built outside of this connection that they aren't ready to let go of or that they're not sure how to incorporate into a life together with you. So this is, well, this could be your energy. Um, so yeah, you could be on either side of this, but yeah, a, a life um, that's about this connection, we'll say. Like maybe they're not sure how to incorporate um, whatever they've built independently into this connection. So another way I want to look at this Nine of Pentacles is actually um, a message I get a lot from the Nine of Pentacles is a message of control. Um, it's not positive or negative, but the Nine of Pentacles kind of gives the energy of wanting to control whatever aspects of life we can. So sometimes this springs up because there are areas of our life that we don't feel like we have full control over. Um, so this might be trying to maintain control over what we do feel like we we can control. Um, so there might be kind of a fear of losing independence or losing control in some way in this person's life. Um, and if this doesn't have to do specifically with this connection, this could be that this person is facing something in their life that's making them feel like they're losing a bit of control, like they're losing um, a bit of their independence or like they're losing something that they built. So um, sometimes I would see like similar energy when let's say somebody is um, getting divorced or something like that. And it's like, they've built this whole life. They might own a home and they have like all of their, their savings and their stocks and their bonds and you know, whatever they've built in this life as a couple. And they might actually feel that they're losing some of that as they're going through this process. Like, um, you know, they have to sell their home. They have to um, split things. They have to pay, you know, <laughs> pay certain things. They might have alimony payments or, or whatever is going on, but this could be something that kind of threatens what they felt they had built. And that's making them feel like they're not sure which way to go in life in general. So, um, moving back over to the thinking woman with the nine of swords, this is again, like I'm saying, it's this very mirrored energy. It just, it displays differently. So I do see um, person B being in more of a state of um, worry or just using a lot of mental energy toward this connection like I was like I was saying before um, I do like that both of these are coming through as nines because it gives me that energy of completion it gives me that energy of nearing the end of a cycle if this is something that this connection has felt stuck in if there's been something going on on one side or the other that's kind of preventing this connection from unfolding or um, from growing from deepening this feels like um, something's being cleared away like like you're almost at the end of whatever this cycle is which if we're looking at the nine of swords yeah um, I think that's a cycle that that most people would want to be done with because um, it can be very it can be unpleasant. It can be um, difficult energy to navigate. So a lot of mental energy going toward this. Um, this person might have a lot of questions. So they might worry about the future of this connection. They may, they may kind of have like mental conversations with person A. Um, a lot of things that they wish they could say or conversations they wish could be had, but it's like they aren't able to communicate them for whatever reason. This might be a, a separation or something that's causing that. So that could be one reason why the Nine of Swords is showing up. Another thing I'm picking up on is just that this person, like they're thinking about person A a lot. They're thinking about the connection a lot, but not only that, I'm feeling like this person might have difficulty sleeping sometimes. Um, because it seems like at night, these are the times when everything kind of slows down and thoughts about this connection or, or worries about this connection come to the front of their mind. And it's like, they kind of run rampant during this time. So, um, this person might even find that they're having dreams about this connection or about this person a lot of the time. Um, yeah, they're both, they're both in a lot of mental energy. It just, it just displays differently. I do think that person A has more of a tendency to come across as unbothered um, than, than person B, but the energy is the same. So I want to pull a couple of oracle cards to look at um, 
kind of the the energy between um, person A and person B. The energy of the two parties. Oh, there's your card. When I drop your card, that's how we know that it's really the right card. So let's see what we have. Um, we have Eclipse. And I'm going to pull another one. So this is... I, I kind of got lost in the shuffle and I don't know if um, this is the energy between the two of you um, or the energy holding this connection together um, it can also be shared energy things that both of you are feeling so we have Eclipse and we also have the passing notes card let me get settled okay um, okay so with the Eclipse I feel like what's happening here, because with the clips, I get this energy of like overshadowing or dominating, influencing, having some influence over. And remember when I was saying like this indecision um, is like contagious. I feel like that's what this is pointing to. I feel like um, some kind of indecision or some type of not having all of the answers, feeling like, like we're hesitating, like we're in the dark, something, some, some kind of energy like that has sort of influenced and overshadowed some of the other feelings that that were present here or some of the other feelings that were more on the surface um because i do feel like both parties kind of feel this like they feel this energy of not knowing what's going on <laughs> um not knowing what step to take um I feel like, and this could go the other way too, but it, I just, the way this is coming through is that person, something about person A's actions are influencing person B's actions, but it really couldn't go um, either way. Um, I'm also hearing total eclipse of the heart, like the song, you know? I, so I feel like that is potentially very descriptive of this. So like um, some lyrics are coming to my mind, like, in that song she literally says i don't know what to do i'm always in the dark so um that may be that may resonate that might ring true that might be significant in this connection in some way um but that song is really about um like falling apart and then like sometimes being in this place of losing hope and then remembering how strong and powerful this connection is. And that's what I think is important about this. Like that's kind of the feeling I'm taking away. I do feel like there is some type of uncertainty flowing through this connection, but I also feel like both, both parties in this uh, recognize the weight of this, recognize how significant this is, recognize how, um, how important and how crucial this connection has been to some kind of evolution that they're going through. We have these butterfly images in both pictures. So I do think there's been something transformative about this connection on both sides. And um, I also think there are moments of losing hope on both sides and that maybe there's a lot that's not understood because there is a lot of shared energy, but there might be a lot that's not understood. We have the passing notes card, which um, it can be about communication. To me, sometimes this talks about like undercover, or, like sneaky communication. It can be communication through like messenger apps, maybe not seeing each other in person, but communication through um, text messaging or, or apps or something like that. Um, it also to me feels like fleeting um, communication, communication that is maybe not consistent or that maybe isn't very well understood. Because when I think about like this energy of passing notes, um, we've probably all done that from time to time. Like maybe when we were kids or, you know, in class or something, you pass a note. But the reality is you could never really tell, let's say you're passing the note to your friend. You could never tell your friend whatever it was that you were trying to say as well in a note as you could if you could just talk to them. But you know, you're, you like you couldn't interrupt the class or whatever. Um, so things can get misunderstood or like a joke maybe doesn't come uh, come across as funny as it was in your head because you had to write it down or um, there are details you had to leave out because you just needed to write a little note or something. So this can be communication that really just isn't, um, it isn't clear um, or it, it takes longer. Like <laughs> uh, it can be almost a frustrating way to communicate. Like it takes longer, but this could also just indicate um, distance between the two of you and how you are communicating through some written form. So I want to jump into the tarot now. 
and look at this connection. So what we're going to do is we're going to look on the left side, we're going to look at this person's feelings um, when it comes to this connection. And then over here, we're going to look at their intentions when it comes to this connection. And we're going to use the bottom of the deck energy to indicate any potential action that they may take towards you in the near future. So we're going to start with the feelings. So what is this person's feelings? when it comes to this connection. What are their feelings when it comes to this connection? Okay, we have the Six of Wands in reverse. The Eight of Swords. What are the feelings when it comes to this connection? Okay, the Four of Cups. Okay, I'm going to get their intentions out here and then we will um, we'll also see potential actions and we'll talk about all of it. Oh, did we get both of our cards? Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure if these are, if these were supposed to be in, in reverse or not. I guess we will take them in reverse. And bottom of the deck energy we are using for potential actions. So let's look at this. Let's look at the feelings. Okay. We have the six of wands in reverse, the eight of swords, and the four of cups. I do feel like this four of cups energy is like tapping right into that indecision. Um, I'll try to start from the beginning, but that's really pulling my energy. So the six of wands showing up in reverse. So in its upright position, the six of wands is about um, a feeling of victory, of recognition, of some kind of um, success, some kind of good news. And I feel like this person might be having the feeling of um, being defeated or having the feeling that somebody is working against them. Um, yeah, I, I feel like this, I feel like this person doesn't know what direction to go in. Um, with the Eight of Swords energy, they feel, they're feeling stuck in some way. They're feeling trapped in some way. Um, I have to say, like, to me, this looks like, this looks like this indecisive energy here. So I don't know which side of this you were resonating with, but it looks like the person that we're asking about is having a lot of these trapped feelings, which honestly could show up on either side because like I was saying, there's an influence that whoever's being indecisive or whoever is not um, giving all the information that they need to be giving when it comes to this connection, it's kind of, um, it's kind of influencing the whole connection. So I do feel like this person, I feel like they are um, a little bit confused here, to be honest with you. I don't think that they know which way to go. I don't feel like they, at this point, they're not feeling like they can win. Um, so I almost feel like their feelings are being overshadowed. Like their true feelings are being overshadowed by some kind of fear and by not wanting to take an option. There's an option that they don't want to take. I actually have to clarify this, you guys. I, <laughs> um, I don't feel like this is this person's, I don't feel like these are their feelings toward the connection. I feel like these are their fears about the connection, um, which says a lot. It says a lot that I, it's almost like 
it's almost like they can't um, at times even access what their feelings are because they have this feeling that they will that something won't work out for them that they will be rejected and they can't even they can't even make a decision about which way to go and I feel like they do know what they want to do with the four of cups or or they're figuring it out but let me clarify let me clarify all of this what is this what are their feelings okay wow okay so we have the movement of swords which is the knight of swords the three of pentacles the two of pentacles there's that juggling there's that juggling that um that indecisive kind of thing again the sky father which is the emperor and the innocence of wands the page of wands okay okay this person's true feelings are um are very different than what they're afraid of but what I think is interesting about this is I feel like it's hard for you to know what this person's true feelings are if this is your group you will know because you'll know that you're you're kind of confused about at the bottom of the deck you see we have the seven of cups choices 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 um, I feel like this person's being influenced a lot by their fears by um, their indecision by by not being able to figure out what they want to do about a situation it's almost keeping them from from tapping into their true feelings um, when we look a little bit deeper we see somebody who wants to communicate with the movement of swords this is someone who wants to communicate um, fast this is communication that comes in really fast um, this is actually change that happens really fast. And we have this three of pentacles energy, this feeling of wanting to work together on something. And then the two of pentacles not being like not being sure what to do again. There's a lot of indecisiveness. Um, this person wants to take charge. Aries energy coming through with the um, sky father. That might be significant here. Um, this person wants to take charge here. They want to, they want to express. I feel like what they're doing instead is staying in this eight of swords energy. And that's actually what's coming through so heavily because they, they just, they feel trapped by indecision right now. This is, um, this reading really took a turn that I wasn't expecting. Um, it, this person's hard to decipher, to be honest with you. I can see that there are feelings here. Like, I'm not going to lie. I, I almost wish I could say that there weren't because it's actually really confusing. But no, I can see that there's feelings here. There's a lot of passion. There's the desire for a new start. There's a desire for like forward momentum towards you. There's a lot of passion here. So this might be a relationship where there's a lot of physical attraction. I feel like this person sees a lot in you and, um, and vice versa. They feel that you've seen something in them. Like you see their unique qualities. You see what they have to offer. I feel like whatever situation this person might be, um, stuck in or however it is that they're feeling, um, that they don't know which way to go. It's like they didn't, they haven't gotten this before. They haven't gotten, um, they haven't been in a situation where somebody has validated them, where someone has acknowledged them, where someone has seen all of the beautiful qualities that they have to offer and everything that's unique about them. So this connection makes them feel really powerful. In a way, there's a lot of fire energy coming through. Um, like, like I said, we have this Aries energy, but also Leo Sagittarius energy. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Let's look at um, intentions here. We have the Queen of Cups in reverse. And we have the Hanged One in reverse. So uh, <laughs> this is about a lot of inward reflection when it comes to emotions. This person... I think that they are in a place where they feel like they need to tap into their emotions. The hangman in reverse can indicate 
um, coming out of this place of not moving, of this place of indecision. This is kind of reiterating that. It can indicate coming out of this place. So this person intends to come out of this place. I can really see that because we have the two of wands in their like potential actions towards you and the two of wands is planning energy so all of this indecisive stuff that is keeping them stuck like they're just stuck right there just standing right there not sure if they want to go down this path or down that path um, again we've got that same energy here with the two of wands and we have the two of pentacles a lot of choices here a lot of choices but this person wants to make some sort of plan um, I'm looking further into the deck to see how likely this is that they will come through with this plan. We have the strength card underneath. We have the two of cups, nine of cups. Um, I'd say it's pretty likely. I'd say that they're, they're devoted to the idea of of planning how to get out of this indecisive place. And I'm sorry, you guys, for like leaning toward this side because I was trying to keep this part pretty neutral, but it just feels to me like um, person A is the person on your mind and you would fall more into the person B category. If that doesn't resonate, this might not be your pile or um, it could be because of that mirrored energy. But yeah, this person wants to make some sort of plan. I want to get some... Um, angel guidance when it comes to this and I'm blowing your cards all around I apologize you know what's funny I'm just kind of remembering that earlier I was like saying this thinking woman um, that that energy kind of is making the this connection feel like a puzzle that needs to be solved and then when i go to look into this person's energy it really turned out to be a puzzle like a, a puzzle that i was trying to solve so we have this angelic protection here very beautiful energy um i think that both of you in this connection are protected and the, the connection in general is protected vulnerability and freedom um <laughs> yeah with that nine of pentacles energy i really feel that i feel like this person has to get to a more vulnerable place um and release themselves from whatever seems to be holding them back holy love so i i just i really do i think that there really is um there's strong connection here there's a lot of fear and hesitation as well let's pull some love story oracles for number two self-worth god i feel like something similar came out in um in group one yeah i feel like that's that three of pentacles energy um they've started to value themselves i think they they see more value in themselves because of the value that you've seen in them um like we were talking about before they're really i feel like a card flipped i don't know um they're really appreciative of what you've seen in them and it's making them see something deeper in themselves wow that's a lot of cards <laughs> So we have the family card. This could be that they see a family with you or they see um, there might be some issues with family as well. That could be part of this indecision. We also have passion. Um, innocence of wands, I was picking up on that. And with the, um, the emperor energy, there's a lot of passion, you guys. I just dropped the entire deck. So um, that's how this reading is going. <laughs> Um, I think I'm going to leave it there. There is definitely a lot of passion here. That is for sure. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it there. <sighs> kind of an intense reading. Thank you for, um, for hanging out with me and, and, and being patient while I try to decipher that energy. Um, if you did enjoy this reading, if you resonated with any of these messages, don't forget to like it, leave me a comment down below and hit the subscribe button if you feel like it. And hopefully I will see you again really soon in another reading. Bye.
Hi number three, if you were drawn to this yellow jasper, this is going to be your reading. We're going to find out what the person on your mind is feeling toward this connection and what their intentions are when it comes to this connection. So we're going to start the reading with a person A, person B spread. Um, you might see yourself on both sides of this spread and that would be perfectly okay. Um, it would just mean that the two of you are mirroring each other a little bit. So yeah, just kind of take it as it resonates and see where you recognize your energy um, on either side of the spread. So we'll start with person A. For person A, we have Angel of Balance card 48. Beautiful, beautiful card. Um, I'm so drawn to the pyramids on this card right away. So I wonder if there's some some kind of significance there that will jump out at you. Um, we'll see if that if something with the pyramids um, comes through in the reading. I don't know why that's really jumping out at me. For person B, we actually got two cards. Um, so let's take a look at those. We have anxiety card 18 and we have attachment card five. Okay. <clears throat> All righty. Um, we'll start with person A. So this is such a beautiful energy, this angel of balance. Person A, I feel like person A wants to find balance in this connection. They're probably actually seeking some form of balance um, throughout their life, some type of harmony, um, looking to find more ease, to to find more grace in their life as general, like in general. Um, and I feel like they're not expecting, like this isn't somebody who's expecting to get more out of this connection than they're putting in. Um, they want this to be an equal give and take. And again, I'm feeling like this is an attitude that they've adopted in their life in general. So this could bleed over into other relationships that they have. They want it to be an equal give and take. And, you know, to be honest, the energy that I'm feeling from person A is that they may have actually been willing in the past to give a little bit more than they were getting um, in this connection and in, in other connections. They might be the type of person that is so giving and so generous that they do tend to overgive. And I feel like this is even somebody who could be okay with that to a certain extent because they are, um, I just feel this sense of devotion from this person. It's a very, very sweet energy. Um, I feel like it's not that they want to be taken advantage of, but they do want to give their all to this. Um, I just feel like they will go to great lengths to protect this relationship and to make uh, person B feel loved and feel cared for. I do see that with this energy of balance showing up for person A, they may be reaching a point where they they realize this need to take care of themselves or to nurture themselves a little bit more or or to nurture themselves just as much as they nurture this connection or as they nurture those people in their life um so yeah there's there's kind of this there's kind of this feeling coming through for person a a little bit of a heavier feeling to be honest um this is really really beautiful energy but i feel like there's something beneath it i feel like I feel like this person may have actually been taken advantage of in past relationships or maybe even earlier on in this relationship. Um, they could have felt that relationships that they've experienced haven't been very balanced in the past. This can even be um, relationships with friends and family members. It doesn't have to be romantic, but it's like they, I think there's someone who has experienced this um this kind of unbalanced connection and they're just reaching a point where that's not what they want to experience anymore. Um, I feel like this is somebody who can definitely relate to putting in all the work uh, to a relationship, being the one to put in all the work and not necessarily always getting the reward for that work or not always getting the recognition for that work. Um, I do feel like by nature, this is someone who's very, very nurturing, very caring person. And that sometimes 
that kind of nurturing and caring nature of theirs may have like bit them in the butt. Does that make any sense? I'm trying, what is the way that you say that? Um, like it came back to haunt them sometimes or um, we'll just go with bit them in the butt. I really don't know. <laughs> I don't think that's like a, a saying, but you know what I mean? Like um, when, when you put yourself in those kind of positions where you're kind of kicking yourself later, like, oh, I was so nice. I was so overly caring. I gave so much. And then this is the thanks I get for it. I feel like person A has experienced that um, numerous times probably in relationships. Um, sometimes people take from them without making sure that they give something in return. Um, so I feel like this person is seeing that and that they really want to cultivate a sense of balance in this connection. Um, they may have learned from previous mistakes here. So that could be really where this is coming from. But yeah, I... I think I, I think I'm like understanding this energy and I think that's where the heavier energy is coming in and this um, symbolism of balance because I feel like this person wants to make sure that they don't get swallowed up by this connection because they may have learned from past experiences that like ignoring their own needs for the sake of the relationship or putting their own goals on hold for the sake of um, the relationship or to to kind of elevate someone else or um, to be that support system to someone else um, that that hasn't always paid off in the end. So I feel like this person is not only wanting to see balance in the relationship, but they're also looking to maintain balance within themselves. Like they're, they're wanting to maintain a level head to a certain extent when it comes to this connection, even though they're feeling these, um, strong feelings, they want to make sure that they don't neglect areas of the, of their life or neglect areas of themselves, that their personal growth is still, um, a main part of the equation, even if they are pursuing this relationship, even if they are putting energy into this relationship. But at the same time, I feel like they are so invested in this and that under the right circumstances, this is the type of person that will give their all to the connection. They're still willing to, um, to love at a very deep level, even though they have been hurt in the past, even though they might have been betrayed in the past, they're still willing to, to go there. They're still willing to connect on that level. So it's really beautiful energy. It's almost the energy of like, um, being willingly naive in a way, like it's not being naive in the sense that you don't know any better. It's like being pure of heart, um, having the experience, knowing the, the hurt and the pain, but still being willing to love and to express and to give somebody a chance. And I feel like all this person asks in return is that um, the effort is made, that that it's an equal give and take, that there's a balance there, that, that the love is evident. I feel like that's what this person wants. Um, so let's move on to person B. So for person B, we did get anxiety and attachment. Um, these are two, two of the heavier, um, energies in this deck and you can just tell by looking at the images so um i am drawn to the number five here five indicating change um especially with this attachment card because the attachment card can talk about things that we are attached to in our lives um, things that we are bound to things that have to change but it can be a little difficult to make that change so um that is standing out to me. A personal evolution is kind of jumping out to me with the mask that she's holding. It's like she's removing this mask or at least contemplating um, whether she wants to remove it or, you know, potentially put the mask on. Um, I'm reading it as removing the mask, but I suppose she could be putting the mask on. Either way, this is a change to identity. This is, um, this is an evolution of some sort. 
I feel a lot of change over here. I feel a lot of change with person B. Um, with person A, I don't get the feeling of a whole lot of change going on right now. I feel like this person is pretty stable in their energy. They've kind of integrated all the lessons that they've learned and they are very stable right now. They know exactly what they want. For person B, I get this feeling of something being in flux. Um, like we were just talking about with the feeling of change, that they may be changing something about themselves. Also, the number 18, um, which would represent a nine, and nines are about um, coming to the end of a cycle, approaching the end of a cycle, which of course, if we begin on a new cycle, means that there's a lot of change. It means we're on a new path. So um, I am feeling that there's maybe a lot of um, apprehension on on person B's side about whatever kind of changes are going on in their life, whatever might be in flux in their life. Um, this is talking about the need to let go of old patterns or people or fears from the past. Um, and it's showing up with the anxiety card. It's, it's really a strong feeling of being stuck um, because if you look at her hand, she's actually, she's actually chained to that post. And so that post would represent the old. It would represent something that, that needs to fall away, something that she even wants to have fall away in her life. But, um, she's feeling, feeling like she can't get away from it. Like making this change isn't the easiest thing to do. And maybe even feeling a lot of fear, kind of projecting that fear into the, the future with this anxiety card, because, um, anxiety is about worries about the future, worries about how something will turn out, worries about, um, what will happen if we do make a particular change. So there's a particular situation or a person or something in this person's life that they feel changed to something that they might feel that they can't escape. Um, it's bringing up a lot of fear and a lot of worries about where to go from here. Where do I go from here? Um, who will I be when I've released this attachment or who will I be if I'm unable to release this attachment, depending on what it is, this might be something that this person feels they literally can't get away from. They have to figure out how to integrate this into the new person that they would like to become, but it's a little bit hard to do. Um, for some of you, I'm picking up on a geographical distance here between the two of you, because this person really feels like they're stuck or trapped by their location in some cases. So they might literally feel like they cannot, um, they can't move. They can't get out of their current circumstance. Um, and I really do. I have the feeling of anxiety when I'm tapping into this energy and it feels like a lot of worry about the future. It's almost like I just have that feeling like my hands are tied. There's nothing I can do. So they might feel like they want to take an action to kind of alleviate some of what they're worrying about, but like they're unable to do it for some reason. Um, so this sense of being, being stuck, being chained to something can be literal. It can be physical, um, like another person or, Yeah, this could be the feeling of them being attached to another person, somebody that they feel they've outgrown or that the, the situation has evolved past them needing to be actually attached to this person. Or this could be um, a group of people they feel that they're attached to. This can even be um, something in their life in general um, or some kind of mental barrier. But I, I do feel like no matter what, it's causing this feeling of being like frozen in place. It feels very real to person B, um, whether it's something tangible, a tangible bar barrier or more of a barrier that that's taking on like more of a, a psychological or a spiritual or an emotional type of feeling, no matter what it is for them, it feels extremely real. It is very real. Even if it can't be seen, even if, um, even if it can't be touched, if there's a very real barrier in their mind when it comes to this. Okay. Um, 
yeah I feel I, I do feel a little bit like I feel a little bit sad here I think that these two people are are probably very compatible and um, are probably very compassionate toward each other especially I feel like person A is very compassionate but I feel like these two people can understand each other on a very deep level and can understand some of the struggles um, that they're facing on a very deep level maybe from personal experience it could be that um, that you've had very similar experiences in life you might be at different stages of that journey but it could be very similar experiences and it, it's leading to more understanding okay i want to open up this energy a little bit more and um just clarify it so we'll start with person a angel of balance just see what this energy is okay so we have the ten of swords um that that's that heaviness that i was picking up on so it's like um i feel like person a has probably been taken advantage of before in relationships um has maybe even been stabbed in the back a few times to be honest it's almost like their kindness has been mistaken for weakness in the past um this could have to do with this connection there could be some kind of of hurt or betrayal that's taken place in this connection maybe even a feeling of abandonment but this could be uh, from past experiences and this is this is what I was feeling this person has grown from this person has learned from they have learned from um, mistakes in the past being too trusting or being too giving but they are still at the same time somebody who is willing to be giving <laughs> like they didn't lose this quality they didn't lose kind of that innocence about them even though other people in the world have not um, have not reciprocated that kind-hearted energy always that has not that hasn't been their experience and I feel like this is probably why person a is able to relate to what person B is going through so much they've been through some similar things they might even struggle with some of these um, feelings of anxiety or of not being able to release circumstances in their life even though they could have been hurtful um, I feel like this is also kind of driving the need for person A to have this balanced relationship because they want to avoid the Ten of Swords, which that's understandable. Um, that's not really energy that any of us like to be in. So yeah, I feel like they do want, they want to, uh, they would rather avoid that. They would rather have a balanced relationship. They would, um, they want to be able to utilize this capacity that they have to love and not really have to worry that they'll be stabbed in the back um because i do feel like this person has experienced that on numerous occasions but it just feels like despite the pain they they're still willing to offer their heart they're still um they're still interested in finding love and finding connection and what they want in return is to be loved I feel like that's what person B wants as well. They want to be loved. I feel like this is where um, where the two of you are really connecting is that both of you want just, just to be able to trust and to be able to love and to um, step out of this place of disappointment. Yeah, I, I'm really for person A, I'm just picking up on this energy of like, um, they just want to know that they're cared for like they want to know that that their person that this person has their back um and i just feel such such a feeling of compassion and understanding coming from person a like they are so compassionate and so kind and so gentle with person b as they're going through whatever this evolution is they i feel like they can actually be a, a great support for them um because it's like on some level, it's just helpful to know 
that someone's in your corner and that's really where person a excels is being that person that's um that's in the corner of their loved ones they're the ones that are always there that's totally their vibe um for person b we have the four of swords <sighs> okay that's that's that stuck that's stuck energy that's stuck energy and um it it really mirrors this energy of attachment here um in the four of swords there's not a lot of movement it's about um staying staying put staying still which which can result in some realizations and in growth and i think that's what's happening for person b but i i can see how for person a they might not see a lot of this it's all happening beneath the surface um I feel like person B doesn't feel like they have many options right now. Um, I'm hearing I, I've i made my bed, now I have to lay in it, is is what I just heard for person B. So I, I'm not really sure what that means for them, but they may be feeling really bound to past decisions um, that they've made, bound to past connections, or feeling like they're powerless to change the trajectory of their life um, so for now it feels almost like they're in this energy of wait and see yeah this this might not be this might not be a time when person B is making a lot of changes on the surface or taking a lot of action but this could be critical uh, kind of downtime for them to figure out what action they might take in the future. Um, and this could have to do with some sort of commitment that this person has made. Um, this can be about a previous relationship, some kind of commitment um, having to do with that or a family commitment, something that they feel they have to see through to the end. Um, I'm also hearing for some of you that this could have to do with like a contract that they're under, like with their job or something. So let's say that they have to stay in a certain location, um, for a certain amount of time. They have to be in this location to do their job for a year and it's like not ideal for them. Um, but there's this feeling of like, I can't get out of it or I have to, I have to see it through. I have to wait this out. Um, so kind of apply that to your your situation if you know what's going on with this person or if this is the side that you're resonating with um but there's there's a feeling that there's there's a lot that this person would like to change and there's a lot of worry about what they will be able to change and what they will not be able to change and how long it's going to take but there are some changes that they want to make they just feel almost bound to past decisions or past agreements um past connections something like that but it's like they they want to evolve and something in their life is holding them in place or they feel like it is because with anxiety a lot of times it's you know it can be our fears it doesn't have to be something that is um actually holding us in place but we can feel like it is yeah, something is having them sit in this energy of stillness or this energy of contemplation, which isn't always, that's not a bad thing um, because that's how we figure stuff out a lot of times. So I want to look at the energy between the two. And we have fortune tellers. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Let me get another one. So this is energy that's either um, tying this connection together, holding this connection together, energy that the two of you are sharing um, at this time. And we have sloth. Okay. Let's see. So I want to start with the fortune tellers card. I find that really interesting. This could literally be referencing... Um, 
you seeking out like tarot readings or spiritual advice when it comes to this connection or um, when it comes to your own personal growth and evolution. And because this is the energy that's kind of running between the two of you, this is something that both of you are doing. And this doesn't surprise me. Um, the energy of person A is somebody who would be um, seeking out some kind of information or advice on how to um, how to navigate kind of these energies that they're going through and person B is in this reflective time So this could be a time that they're searching for answers or looking for signs So I think this is something both of you um, Are doing both of you are experience at, experiencing at this time. I do think that um, signs and synchronicities could be very important to you at this time and if so they're important to both of you if the two of you are not in communication right now I feel like you two are seeing a lot of the same signs and you might not even be aware of it right now if you are um, in communication with this person maybe you've had a discussion like oh I keep seeing this number or I keep seeing um, this particular animal or something like that it could even be something that reminds you of this person, like a, a particular sign that has to do with this connection only. Like no one else would know what this means or or whatever, but it's like when you see that thing, you think of this person or you think of this connection. Um, both of you are having those types of experiences and kind of looking for a way to navigate this energy, looking for a sign that it might work out, looking for a sign that some of this heavier energy can be alleviated. Um, this is the fortune tellers card is also a really lucky card um it's about good luck it's about maybe having some sort of advantage um so this could be a really good omen for this connection it could be that certain things are being made clear to each of you that are going to give you some sort of edge or some sort of advantage give you a little bit more information that will help you make great decisions or um, be in the right place at the right time when it comes to this connection now we also have this sloth energy and the sloth energy is very slow <laughs> um it, it can indicate a slow moving connection a connection that um, might be taking a little while to grow to develop um, it can also indicate something holding the connection back because it can um, at times this energy can be so slow that it's like a full stop so that's kind of an indication of that this also like interestingly enough can indicate reserved energy not just slow energy but reserved energy so this could be the energy of someone holding something back someone being um, afraid to open up in this connection that could that could have a lot to do with it so let's look at your tarot cards and what we're gonna do is on the left side of the spread we're gonna look at this person's feelings and on the right side we will look at their intentions when it comes to this connection and the bottom of the deck energy is going to represent any action that they may take um, in the near future when it comes to this connection so let's look at their feelings whoa what are their feelings when it comes to this connection yikes <laughs> was that all your cards all at once okay ten of swords seven of wands and the star oh Okay, so we've got that Ten of Swords energy again, and that was coming through for Person A. It doesn't have to mean that um, that Person A is, is your person. You could have resonated more with um, Person A, but especially if you did, that's more of an indication of mirrored energy, I would say. Let's, let's pull some cards for their intention, and then we'll look at the bottom of the deck as well. What are their intentions when it comes to this connection? So we have the Five of Cups. Oh, no, I can't, I can't take all this. <laughs> um, the Knight of Swords. The Six of Wands. I really, mm-mm. <laughs> 
bottom of the deck? The sun. Okay. Wow. There's so much going on here. Um, I do feel like in both cases, and this is what I was saying, that you guys are so compatible. Um, you can understand each other on a deep level, even some of the darker sides of what you've experienced, some of the um, darker ways that you've like been hurt or betrayed in the past. You, you two can, like you get each other when it comes to that. I think that this energy that I'm picking up on for person A must be something that is so inherent to person B as well. It could be that right now they're going through something that's making that uh, not be like the, the most evident energy that comes through from, for them, or they could be a little bit guarded from past emotional stuff that makes that not, not come through. But it's like, I feel like the two of you can really relate to this and I feel like I feel like this person wants to fight for this connection I feel like they want to overcome um, all this feeling of hurt and defeat that they've experienced it's highly likely that they've had some not so pleasant relationships that um, that they've been hurt they've been betrayed they've been stabbed in the back before and I feel like both of you um, both of you have had these sort of experiences and can relate and there's like this part of both of you that wants to just be hopeful, like that wants to just believe that it could be different, believe that a connection could be um, better and more more balanced and more beautiful than anything that, than you, that you've experienced before. And I feel like what I'm seeing here is two people who realize that that's what they've found here. Like this, this relationship has the potential or has already demonstrated to be that relationship that doesn't have to feel like this 10 of swords. And this person feels like they feel like they are beaten down. They feel like, um, like there's not a whole lot of hope right now and like they don't know what step to take at the same time they're fighting for this like they're they're defending this um they're kind of doing it in their own way right now and they might be doing it in kind of a quiet way but i feel like they there's definitely a feeling of this is worth fighting for this is worth doing the work for whatever that work may be and then we're finishing up um this area of how they feel with the star um really really beautiful energy very hopeful energy this is uh, the energy of optimism this is the energy of looking forward for for something like looking forward to it being beautiful to it being look at that balance do you see how she has these two pictures in her hand and she's pouring uh she's pouring them both out she's achieving that balance so wanting this to be balanced, wanting to show that it's balanced. It really could be that this person doesn't feel that they've stepped up in a very balanced way, but their hope is to be able to demonstrate that balance. I feel like these are the two like kindest hearted people um, ever. And like they deserve this, like they deserve um, to be together. They deserve to find this. They deserve to have that that one, you know, that person that will um, be in their corner and fight for them. That's so funny. The seven of wands came out and I was, um, I was talking about how they will fight for this, but then I'm thinking earlier, um, in the energy of person a, there was kind of this idea of like, they're that, that person that, that shows up that good friend, that the person you can always count on the, the person who will have your back, the person who will pick you up when you've been beaten down when you find yourself in this ten of swords energy and they understand it and i feel like this is energy that is mirrored um this your person wants to fight for you they want to be that person that's in your corner as well um really really beautiful energy when we move over into their intentions we have the five of cups we have the knight of swords and the six of wands so the five of cups shows somebody um, walking away from from something um, maybe feeling a bit of loss but this is really again kind of that vibe of change that we were talking about in the beginning with the five um, on the attachment card so I do feel like change is coming for this person it might not be the easiest change there might be something that they have to leave behind there might even be a version of themselves that they have to leave behind and kind of separating themselves from that identity might be difficult for them but they intend to 
move this connection forward and to have some sense of accomplishment, have some sense of um, like recognition, um, success. I feel like they think that like this connection is the prize. They have the intention, they have the desire to win, like to win the prize and, and not just for some ego, um, ego driven reason. This is because they think that like this is this is kind of the ultimate goal. This is what they've wanted. They may have experienced a lot of Ten of Swords moments. They may feel right now like they they can't really get up or like they're not even sure if they can make a connection this deep, but they have the intention of having victory here. With the Knight of Swords, I see communication. I see swift changes. I see that this is what this person wants to do. Um, this is their intention. There's a lot that they want to say to you. Um, we're going to use bottom of the deck energy for any action that they may take towards you. And we have the sun card there. So the sun card is the happiest card in the deck. Um, I don't know if it shows a lot in terms of what movement they will take, but it certainly shows me their feeling about uh, how they would approach you. They want to be in a positive place when they do approach you. They want to be optimistic about what's going on. They, they definitely don't want to be... Um, in this anxious energy when they come forward. We can look a little deeper into this, the Wheel of Fortune. They feel like this is faded. So if they do take action, they're going to take inspired action. They're going to take action that they feel um, they've been guided to take. Um, like we were talking about with the Fortune Tellers card, this is kind of the energy of both of you looking for signs, looking for synchronicities, looking for guidance on that next step. So um, any action that they take will be divinely guided. They will feel that they have the green light when they take this action. And we have temperance, so, um, and the sloth, <laughs> patience. The idea of patience is showing itself over and over again. If you'll notice, all three cards at the bottom of the deck um, are major arcana cards. So these are huge themes of great importance to this person. They take this seriously. Any action that they take will be action that um, has been well thought out, well planned. They take it seriously. They know that it could change the course of their life. They they actually, I feel like, already know that just meeting you has changed the course of their life. It's changed something in them um, on a really deep level. I, I really feel like this person wants to be in a very happy and optimistic place when they, when they make a move towards you. Um, I also feel like this is their energy when they're around you, this sun card. So <laughs> this might not be so much a matter of waiting until they feel that energy, but just, just being around you to feel it because it's like they feel so uplifted when they're around you. We're going to get some angel um, guidance cards when it comes to this connection. Let's see what messages do you have for number three. sacred plan. That's, that's what I was saying. Um, any action that's taken will be divinely guided. Then we have the mother, father, God card. So this is about divine connection. This is about listening, um, listening to the guidance, t tapping into that inner knowing, that intuition. Um, I feel like <laughs> I feel like this this connection is on some sort of divine path. Blessings and abundance. So that, that is a great sign. And it's like I was saying, the fortune teller card is about um, luck. It can, it can be an indication of luck and um, of things just kind of going your way. <laughs> Feeling like it just kind of happened um, the, the perfect way. And I'm, I'm getting a lot of that. Wheel of fortune. Yeah. I'm getting a lot of that. So let's just see what other messages we can get from the Love Story Oracle. We have Romance. Beautiful. This person definitely recognizes how important this connection is. We have Memories. Um, this might be someone you had a past connection with. And they could be kind of reminiscing about about the time that you spent together. I also think that this card is referencing this 10 of swords um, kind of energy here. Oh my gosh, you guys. 
the card you just got. I'm so excited. Um, I <laughs> Let me try to finish what I was saying. I feel like this Memories can be referencing this Ten of Swords energy that's showing up. I think it's kind of a theme for both of you, uh, a, like referencing some kind of hurt or disappointment that both of you have experienced and can relate to. So this is a lot of what goes through this person's mind, kind of remembering what they've been through. Um, you had the Hope card come out, which is uh, basically the star card like it's just it's the same kind of energy this person is very very hopeful I think you both are very hopeful for this connection very hopeful for how um, how it can turn out um, what kind of beautiful energy can come in for it with the Sun card with the wheel of fortune with the star I mean these are really powerful indications that there is something here there is something beautiful here and there's something that both of you want to nurture and maintain and this is the kind of relationship that will be reciprocal it will be balanced it will be um very loving and nurturing on both sides so it's like i feel like the two of you aren't going to want for anything because you're going to have each other's back you're going to be so loving and caring toward each other or that's that's what you're experiencing with them right now if you are um with this person so Gorgeous energy. Beautiful, beautiful. I think I'm going to leave it there. Number three, thank you so much for hanging out with me and letting me read your cards. If you enjoyed this reading, if you resonated with any of these messages, don't forget to like the video. Leave me a comment down below and hit that subscribe button if you feel like it. And hopefully I will see you again in another reading really soon. Bye.